Most people, if you ask them on the street, mm -hmm. um, if they had a, a relative that collected U.S. coins, mm -hmm. somebody collected U.S. coins in their in their family's heritage. Right. Um, but if you ask them about whether they could buy a two thousand year old coin, they'd say no, it's only in a museum. Mm -hmm. But that's not the case. Hello, silver fans. This is T, and you're in the place to be for silver education, acquisition, entertainment. Hey, thanks for watching, everybody. <laughs> Now I have to admit, I feel very privileged to have the opportunity to have access to some of the foremost experts on the entire planet when it comes to rare coins. Hey, if you enjoy coins and coin shop videos, you found the right channel. Be sure to subscribe to see more and hit that bell notification to be alerted to the next one. Enjoy. Aaron Burke. Hey, how you doing? Pretty good. Pleasure to see you again. Good to see you. Every time I hang out with you, you've got some amazing stuff to show me. And uh, hey, what do you have today, my friend? You are very lucky. You guys got a treat today. So <laughs> what we got today is the first time that a pair of Roman Colosseum Cisterci have ever been offered together. Mm -hmm. So what's really interesting about these is that, so these were actually made by Titus in 80, 81 AD after the Colosseum was built. And so this one was actually issued by Titus. This one was actually issued by the next emperor, Domitian, after Titus died. And he was actually doing this as a, they call it divus, uh, Titus as kind of a remembering of Titus, kind of uh, giving him a call out, as if you will. Okay. There's only about ten of the Domitian types in existence. Holy smokes. There's about eighty of the Titus ones in existence. So the fact is, we are offering a pair wow. at the same time, and probably the only time anybody could ever own a pair of these at the same time. And uh, what we now consider these coins, especially the Titus version, to be issues almost kind of like Jewish issues because David Hendon who wrote the book on Jewish coins mm -hmm. he actually lists these in his book and the reason is is because Titus when his father um, was Emperor Vespasian he sent Titus to Judea to quash or quell the uh, Jewish rebellion what time frame we talking um so that would have been during Vespasian's reign maybe 10 15 years before that okay and so um, he actually sacked the Jewish temple and stole all the gold and silver out and brought it back to Rome and they built the Colosseum from the booty, is what they call it, <laughs> of, uh, of the Judean um, wars. And so in the one of the upper pediments of the Colosseum, which doesn't exist any longer, they found a Judea capta, meaning that they conquered the Jews, mm. in the center of the Colosseum. So, so now we know that they were basically wow. saying that they built this on the backs of the Jews. Uh, a built-in diss in the architecture That's right. to the Jewish people that they just conquered and stole their wealth. Stole May I? Um, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I see you're holding those with your bare hands. I am. And last and, time we made an ancient <clears throat> coin video, people were like, oh my goodness, doesn't so he know any better? <laughs> I have to explain to you all. Yeah, I've been doing this for over 30 years. All ancient coins come out of the ground covered in sediment. Mm -hmm. They're all cleaned, chemically or mechanically. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is nothing that are on my hands that are ever going to affect this coin. If I was holding these with gloves, I have a better chance of dropping it. Yes. So, uh -huh. in fact, I actually feel it's better if I actually hold the coins. And I've never damaged a coin in over 31 years of doing this. And you're not going to do it either. And the people who think that they need to hold it with gloves are only saying that because they have no clue. Right. When so, it comes to sorry. ancient coins, it's a whole different animal than handling a US Morgan coins. dollar or a trade dollar or something Correct. like that. And I'm still holding them on the edge like you would a U.S. coin. Right. But uh, I've handled these things for over 30 years and I've never damaged a coin ever and they've been handled by people for 2,000 years that's correct <laughs> depending on when they came out of the ground may I handle Please. those coins it's quite the honor uh, to hold a, a coin of this magnitude absolutely and show it up to my camera here and so that is the Titus version yes and so and this was first and this is after they sacked uh, this is after they, they built the Colosseum oh okay this is after they built the Colosseum when Titus was emperor. Oh boy. So his father Vespasian was emperor first, uh -huh. then Titus became emperor later. Got it. 
And value on something like this? So we're selling the pair for 325000 but we'll take a discounted offer if anybody comes in. You know, I, I, <laughs> on my coin channel, on my channel, I do a weekend auction. Would you ever consider putting these up on my auction? I, Why not? I, I, you know, I do a buck and go, and it gets people all riled up. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh my goodness. Look at this. I've held that other one before. You have. And this is the first time I'm holding this one. Only 10 of these on the planet? Yep. yep. And where are the rest of them other than museums, in my hand and here in Chicago? Probably in museums or collections. Mm -hmm. Wow. And what's really interesting about this one is this it was actually sold by an auctioneer as a Titus version because the back of it was all encrusted okay. with, with a sediment okay. we bought the coin we cleaned the coin and discovered that it was divas titus meaning that it was a demission issue so it was sold improperly because the coin was never cleaned gosh that cleaning process there's probably only a, a few people on the planet who have that you know expertise to clean coins of this magnitude right uh, you're the leader uh, on this side of the Atlantic Ocean, right. as far as I know, and there's probably a handful others in, in Europe, I would imagine. Yep. And how often do you have coins like this in your possession? All the time. <laughs> so to me, it's a big thrill. To you, it's you know business it's as usual. It's still a thrill. I okay. mean, we 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 um, represent clients in auction, mm -hmm. which is fun because I get to spend other people's money, yeah. <laughs> essentially, for a small commission. Uh -huh. um, but uh, I'm able then to handle all of their coins okay. before I deliver them. And so it gives me the opportunity to handle all types of high-end coins or rare coins that we would never even buy for stock, mm -hmm. but have the opportunity to handle ourselves and to help our clients build the, their collections properly without them making mistakes and also um, kind of maneuvering them through the whole auction process. Now, are those currently for sale right now? Yeah. They're going up for auction? They're, uh, they're currently in our, uh, we do a, what's called a buyer bid sale. Okay. It's in our current buyer bid sale at a fixed price. Okay. twenty five, I believe. Okay. Got it. So. Well, thanks for showing me those. My uh, viewers will get a big kick out of seeing that caliber of coin right. <laughs> in my hands. And it's a big thrill for me, too. Well, so. what's funny is somebody mentioned, oh, my God, that's as much as a house. Well, it is. Yeah. But here you get two houses. You get two <laughs> coliseums, which are one of the seven wonders of the world. So, hey, not too bad, right? <laughs> that's a whole lot of value. <laughs> it's all relative. You know, the yeah. people say, why would somebody spend that much money on a coin? Uh -huh. Well, if you have millions and millions or even billions of dollars it's a small expenditure you have to think of it all relatively speaking uh -huh. you can still buy ancient coins for as less than you know less than ten dollars um, but the quality won't obviously be as good but the fun is still the same so it's all relative to how much you have and somebody who's spending this kind of money um, I wouldn't say to go and stretch for something if you couldn't afford it right but the people who buy these things can afford it so it's a little bit different scenario it is quite amazing that uh, some of the entry-level you know, ancient coins can be purchased for 25, 30, yep. 50 bucks. Yep. And again, 2,000 year old coins, 1,500 year old coins uh, that have so much neat history. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, why are they, any idea why they're so underappreciated on that end of the spectrum? Is because just people don't know about I them? I think people don't know about them. Okay. It's becoming less and less of that because of the internet. Yes. Uh, most people, if you ask them on the street, mm -hmm. um, if they had a, a relative that collected U.S. coins, uh -huh. somebody collected U.S. coins in their, in their family's heritage. Would you believe when I was 18, I had a silver dollar collection right um but if you ask them about whether they could buy a 2000 year old coin they'd say no it's only in a museum uh -huh. but that's not the case um there's you have beginning of coinage 650 bc the end of the roman empire which we call the byzantines is 1453 a.d okay. so you have 1800 years of coin oh. production okay. and they produced a ton and mother earth was their safety deposit boxes huh. and so when they find groups yeah. of coins and they say they yeah. find 10 percent mm -hmm. um or less it's millions and millions and millions of coins yeah. wow so um uh, it's they're plentiful. Bronze coins were typically used by the by you know people to buy loaves of bread or whatever they needed to buy. Gold and silver were treasury coins, mm -hmm. so those were buried on trade routes, not mm -hmm. on sites. So that's the other misconception that somehow 
you're you know uh, digging up a site when uh -huh. you're finding ancient coins. Right. Most ancient coins are not found on sites; they're found on trade routes. Because if you had a, a thousand silver coins, which was uh, taken with the armies or by the wealthy to transfer their wealth, they didn't bury them at their home; they buried them out in fields right. where nobody was around. Right. And they die, and two thousand years later, somebody unearths it. There's so uh, that's typically how these things are found. They're found on trade routes. Yeah, it, that makes sense with all the turmoil and all the things that could go wrong sure. on a trade route. It sure. makes sense that someone would want to go stash their loot. Yeah, and you also had armies that were traveling the whole yeah. time. And so uh -huh. you had to ha pay those soldiers as you were going. And so they would literally be burying them, go off to war, and the, maybe a few people would know where it was buried. Mm -hmm. They would die, and that's that. Wow. So um, it's, uh, I mean, if you go to the time of Alexander the Great, he basically, when he took over from Philip II, he was basically at war for his entire reign. Okay. between 336 and 323 BC until he died. Mm -hmm. So he never saw peace. He was just conquering the whole time, wow. traveling and paying his soldiers. Wow. Now, so if this small video whets my audience's appetite to learn more, you have your own channel and you make videos? We do. We, um, we have a podcast called the um, Ancient Coin Podcast with Aaron Burke. It's found on YouTube. Mm -hmm. We're doing our 38th episode so there's literally over 40 hours of coin discussion we talk about current auction we have an educational section and a couple of other fun things and we do that with mike nottleman who's part of the uh coin show uh podcast, podcast yeah. as well all right well i will put links to all that in the video description i know you're a busy guy i really appreciate the time anytime t absolutely Special thank you to these channel members who support my efforts to travel all around and visit coin shops just like Harlan J. Burke today. Thank you guys. I appreciate your support and thank you for watching. Now let me show you some of the ancient coins that I picked up. Look at that eagle there. And this coin looks like it has been used throughout the centuries. Uh, I've got a few more to show you here. Take a look. This one has a couple of figures on either side. If you are an ancient coin aficionado and you know about the origin of these coins, feel free to leave a comment down below. And while you're at it, before you leave, if you enjoyed today's video, hit that like button. That helps YouTube share this video with other like-minded people who might enjoy it as well. Look at this one. Nice, clear focus there. Pretty cool. Thanks for watching, guys. See you on the next Coin Shop video. Toot.